praise. We thank God for those of you who are joining us on our stream. We thank God for those of you who are here and for those that are yet on the way. Father God, we ask you to give them travel and mercy. We ask you again on today, Lord, release them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Father God, we welcome the Holy Spirit. You're welcome. We welcome all of our guests. We welcome all of the heavenly hosts. Father God, we thank you in advance for that that you are going to do for this, your people, on today. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. I'm just going to be transparent. I'm just going to be as open and as transparent as I can possibly be for the sake of the body of Christ. People are who they are because they are who they are. And we who love the Lord and we who are growing in in Christ and dumb, and we who are continuing to grow in our maturity for the things of the kingdom are learning how to still navigate this life that we live in. And we have to learn how to deal with the situations and the circumstances as they present themselves, and it ain't always easy. Come on. Come on. It ain't always easy. Come on. Now, I'm not going to be politically correct and say it isn't always Come easy. On. It ain't always, always easy. Come on. It ain't. Come on down through that. It gets hard. Come on. Sometimes. Come on down through that. And I'm a living testament on today that it's hard. Come on. Sometimes. I had a moment of clarity in the midst of my frustration Come on. this week. And in my moment of clarity and in my moment of need, it was pressed in my spirit that which I'm about to share with you on today, and I hope it helps somebody. Come on. God has given us his spirit to remain in the earth, to dwell in us, to help us in times like these. Mm. Oh, yeah. You got to answer, Pastor. For those who keep con contemplating whether God is real, ask yourself mm. that while you're looking at what mm. you're looking at. Mm -hmm. While you're breathing mm -hmm. what you're breathing. Why you eating what you're eating puts a different perspective on things. But I need for you to understand something about the people who are supposed to be on your side. Come on now. They could be wheat or they could be tap. Mm. They could be a wolf looking like the sheep. Well, come on. God tells us that. We are to be watchmen, watching, watching out, looking. And we're supposed to have people that are watching our backs. All right. So today's sermon, I hope, with all hope that's in me, that it touches and resonates with somebody and helps somebody. Everybody that comes to you ain't coming to help you. That's right. right. Come I'm on. say that again. Everybody that comes to you ain't coming to help you. Say that, say that. Now, when you need help, just a prayer, just a smile, just a kind word. Everybody ain't equipped to help you when you need help the most. That's right. right. John 4 and 1 says that we must try the spirits. By the, by the spirits. To know whether they are from God or not. All right. Everybody that's sent to you, God didn't send them. Mm, that's good. So let's allow God the opportunity to be God. He's going to be God regardless, but let's allow him the opportunity Try to, to right. be God. Come on. See, it's clear to me that our wills run our life. What we will do. <laughs> what we will not do. What we will allow. What we will not allow. But most people want to do right. They want to do right because it's just the right thing to do. Yet the will is still connected to the situation. Well. And sometimes the will wins out over the right thing to do. When we don't see what God is doing in our lives, when we don't see what God is doing in our spirit, that should allow us to know that our spirit is not in alignment 
with God's will. All right. God takes us through things, church. He allows us to go through things to strengthen us and build us, but it doesn't hurt any less. Well, doesn't mean that we don't cry. Doesn't mean that we don't get frustrated. Doesn't mean that we don't feel it like everybody else feels it. The Lord is allowing us to grow in our maturity and allowing us to realize that there are two spirits that are active in this world. Well, the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Well, or the spirit of error. Now, even though the Holy Spirit was left in the earth to assist us, the spirits that rule the world, rule the world either in truth or rule the world with falsehood and lies. All right. Two opposing forces that are diametrically opposed to one another. They fight one another. Right. A lie fights to be the truth. <laughs> But it's a lie. The truth fights the lie to be the truth. Which one will you accept? Come on. It's all about your will. All right. The spirit that comes from God that dwells in us will always glorify and edify his son. His son is Jesus the Christ. That other spirit that is warring against us is an anti-Christ spirit which comes from that spirit of falsehood and that spirit of error. Well, Antichrist means everything that is not like Christ. Everybody's trying to get us to co-sign on things that are anti-Christ. Well, because we want to fit in, we'll co-sign on stuff that God said no sign on. We'll co-sign on it. And we'll on. allow it. And we'll roll with it. And we'll assimilate ourselves. We'll collude with the enemy to fit our needs. When we don't see God using the situation or the circumstance to humble us and to grow us, we have entered into falsehood. Well, Because everything that God does in our life is to glorify Jesus and to grow us up. To be more like him and to be more like the image of his son. Well, it hurts when life throws you a curveball. It hurts when a, a relationship breaks down. It hurts when you lose a job. It hurts when you're on the cusp of a bad report from that. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. But God All right. is still God. Yes, Come on. Sir. Come on. When we don't see what God is doing, we miss what God is doing. All right. What I know sometimes is that the mess in our life is not always a solid mess. Come on now. Sometimes the mess in our lives are noisy messes. And messes make noise. Come on now. I'm just stopping by to tell you that when God has seemingly turned off his audible ear of hearing in our natural sense, that there's still something going on on the inside. Well, There's still a voice that's going on that we hear on the inside. How is it possible for us to hear in two realms? Because we are both natural beings and spiritual beings. You are hearing me. And if the Spirit of the Lord is agreeing with the word inside of you, you are hearing something inside of you in full agreement because the word agrees with the word. Come on. I'm just stopping by to tell you that we're going to deep dive into some truths today. And I'm going to show you how the joy of the Lord should be our strength. But everybody in your life that comes don't come to help you. Some come to sap your strength. Some right. come to set right. you up. Right. Some yeah. come to take you off your course. Some come to put you on another course. Yeah. Some come in sheep's clothing but are ravenously wolves on the inside. The Greek word for joy is shower. It's derived from the word showers. 
which is the word that means grace, abundant grace. This is significant because the grace of God is the shara of God. It's the joy right. of God. Shara clearly means that it is the state of God's active and divine grace alive in us. Say that. Say that. Grace is abounding in us. Oh yeah. Grace lives in us. Now, whether we give grace any any room to operate or not depends on our will. Because sometimes we will, sometimes we won't. There's a commercial that says, sometimes I feel like a nut, sometimes <laughs> I don't. Peter Paul, I'm a joy. Got nuts. Mounds up. Y'all understand where I'm coming from? Sometimes we feel like nuts. Come on. And sometimes we okay. don't. Sometimes we allow the grace of God to operate. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we are obedient to Come the on. Spirit of God. Come on. Sometimes Come on. we're not. Come on. Sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes we do what we're supposed to do. Sometimes we don't. Grace is an inward joy that is not based on human happiness. Grace doesn't come and go like emotional feelings. Grace remains. All right. Grace remains because it has a divine origin. It is intertwined in our spirit man, in our spirit being, in the portion of God that when he blew his necklace into us, he left a portion of his grace inside of us. So regardless of what we do, grace remains. Oh yeah. Regardless of whether we allow grace to abound, regardless of whether or not we allow patience to have its perfect work, patience is there. And grace is there. Well, I want you to get this, somebody. The spirit-given truth always flourishes within us in the hardest times. Well, I'm being first partaker of that because that's for me. It's been a hard week. Come on, come on. I know that grace is abound, and I received the words of prayer that my brothers prayed for me on this morning. Well, and said in the spirit, I felt a strengthening coming when they started interceding ever so quietly on my behalf, just lifting me up before the Lord. I felt it and I feel it now. Come on. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on. Huh? All right. And I feel it real good. Matthew 7 and 15 says, Jesus warned us to watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ferocious, ravenous wolves. Everybody that comes to you ain't coming to help you. Say that. <laughs> Everybody right. that right. comes to you ain't coming to help you. By no means. First Thessalonians talks about how the Thessalonians were under great stress due to the persecutions, due to what was going on in Thessalonica. And in the midst of it all, talk to us. In the midst of it all, they continue to experience a joy that people didn't understand. They continue to experience a joy that people thought something was wrong with. Them. Well, this truth strongly implies to me. That that joy was of a supernatural origin. Yeah. Come on. All right. Come on. Huh? It was due solely to that which was working in them. He who was in them, greater is he who is in, in me than he than he that is in that the, is in the, the world. world. Where is he? In me. God Almighty. He abounds in you. He lives. In you. He works. In you. He breathes. In All you. Right. He grows. In you. And you too. All right. Nehemiah says it like this. The joy. The cherish. 
The shyness of God is our strength. Now, when we find ourselves going through, and if you live long enough, you're going to go through. Well, there's no need in anybody thinking that they're going to be absent from going through. Because you got to go through to, to get, get to. Nehemiah says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah understood that this awareness of God, this favor of God, this grace of God is recognized in our spirit to be active in situations and circumstances that are beyond our control. Well, They're active even when we don't know that they're active. That's what the Holy Spirit right. does. Maintains us. Well, and keeps us on an even keel. But we alter what he's doing. Mm. Oftentimes the silence of God means that he is preparing to bring us into a greater revelation of himself than ever before. He's got to sit you down and shut you up sometimes so you can hear him and see what he's doing. Uh -huh. He's got to let you recognize that this thing is real out here. COVID is real uh -huh. out here. That's right. No lights is real out here. No water is real out here. People being behind on their bills is real out here. You ain't going through nothing that nobody else ain't going through. Well, But you're going through seems different to you. I right. stopped by to tell you you're not the only one. God still sits on the throne. Sometimes the S in our life is not solid because the mess in our life has taken front and center stage. Well, we can't even hear what God is saying in our audible hearing. We can't hmm. hear him in our spiritual hearing because the mess is so big. I'm trying to tell you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what mess looks like. Somebody help me. M-E-S-S. -S. What that's bad? Mess. Yes. Watch me now. Somebody catch the revelation. All your mistakes. Mess. Mm -hmm. All your misinformed misinformation. Mess. All your misapplication of scripture. Mess. All your ego, mess. All your enemies, mess. Well, all your sin, all your selfishness, all your stubbornness, M E S S. It's all a bunch of mess. Well, I stopped by to tell you that God recognizes, even in the midst of our mess, <laughs> who He is. We just sometimes can't see Come on. who he is because of the mess. We told you that that showers, that grace, that joy that is in us is trying to guide us and lead us to a way of truth. Well, There's a flip side to that. Something is always pulling us back to the other side. We talked about Nehemiah and he said that the joy of the Lord is our strength. But Nehemiah understood that in that preparation for us to receive that joy, some things had to be cut away. Yeah. Some things had to be let go. Some things had to be released. Some things had to be loose from our lives so that we could walk in the fullness. When, when God has us in a state of expectation, we should be anticipating a new experience that God is going to allow us to get into, be involved with. See, because when we're seeking God, He draws us near to Him. That's Come right. Huh? That's when right. we're seeking Him, not when we're running from Him. See, people want to run away from God instead of draw not to Him. People don't want to seek God, they want to seek truth. But truth is contemplated by error, which is masquerading as truth, because we don't know whether it's wheat or tap. We don't know whether it's a sheep or a wolf because the word of God said we got to try the spirit, test the spirit, buy the spirit to know whether or not it's even of God. Mm -hmm. Everybody that comes to you mm -hmm. ain't come to help you. 
divine delays never mean divine indifference. God knows about it. God understands it. When you know how God moves, when you know how Jesus moves, when you know how the Holy Spirit moves, the truth will make you free. The problem is most people don't know how God moves. They know how the God of this world moves because they move in perfect unison with him. Mm -hmm. They dance with the devil. Come on. All right. They dance with his imps and skips and demons. They play with witchcraft. They, they play on the other side. They do things and they dibble and they dabble. And I told you earlier, they try to co-sign on things that God no signs on. Mm -hmm. Jesus sees the whole situation That's good. That's good. as an opportunity for God's glory to be revealed while others only see sad situations mm -hmm. and difficult circumstances. Well, sometimes all we can see is the sad situation and the difficult circumstances because we are natural men. And I'm here to tell you that sometimes it gets rough. And sometimes it gets hard. But God, God can reveal his greatest manifestation of his power and glory anytime. Well, anyway, in any manner that he so decides because he alone is God. Every one of us has hopes and dreams. And every one of us has goals and desires. Well, and every one of us has desires of our heart. And every one of us has things that we have before God in the throne room of his majesty. Every one of us are no different than we have went to God and we made prayers and supplications. Now we are in eager anticipation of what God is going to do. Now some are and some aren't. There are new and old promises that God has yet to fulfill. There's still some promises that God made to our predecessors, those that came before us, our originators, our ancestors, if you will, our grandmothers and grandfathers. He made promises to them that can only be fulfilled in this generation because we are the next generation. All right. The promises were laid up upon them and stored up for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. So we're still operating on promises that are being fulfilled in our family line. But you got to know what those promises are. And the only way that you can tap into that is in the spirit. Amen. Maybe you'll believe in God for your breakthrough. Maybe you'll believe in God for a change on your job. Maybe there's something going on in your relationship and you need for God to fix something in your relationship. Maybe you need for God to fix something in your ministry. Maybe God needs to fix something in your child, your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew, your grandson, your cousin, them. Maybe, just maybe, somewhere in your family, something ain't lining up like you need for it to line up. Well, but God, not you, God, you can't fix it. You can mess it up, mess. You can make mistakes with it, mess. You can get your ego in it, mess. You can be stubborn with it, mess. You can be silly with it, mess. You can make a mess of it instead of giving it to God. Everybody comes to you, ain't coming to help you. Come on. Deep down inside, you know when God has spoken to you. Deep down inside, you know when God tells you not to do this, not to do that. But do you listen? Sometimes, sometimes you do. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you don't. Peter Paul, I'm a drug guy, nuts. Mine's Peter Paul, I'm a drug Trying to help somebody. Because it takes a long time sometimes. Sometimes it takes years for us to get in place. Some of us think that we in place, and we are. We in the place that we in, but we're not in the place that we need to be. Everybody has another place to be in God. The place that we are right now and the station that we in is just the place and the station that we in right now. But God is an ever-present God, and we are ever learning him. We're ever being allowed to go deeper into his truth. So we are ascending to higher heights and deeper depths in God. So we can't stay in the same place. Well, How is it that so many people who are churched and have been churched and belong to congregations have been sitting in the same seat for years? Somebody get it, somebody get it, somebody get it. That's my seat. Come on. Can't nobody sit in that seat. You can't sit down in sister so-and-so's seat. 
When the sister so and so goes on to meet her maker, brother so and so goes on to meet his maker, you mean to tell me nobody else can sit in that seat? This is the foolishness of man. This is the mess that we operate under. We think that people have seats and assigned seats like they did in school. Well, calling ourselves grown. Got to be on the front row. You got to be on the front row, but you live in the back row life. Mm. You want to be on the front row to be seen, but you don't want to be seen coming out of somebody else's bed, well. somebody else's house, somebody else's apartment, somebody else's car. You want to be seen until it's time to be seen. Then you want to hide out. Mm. All right. So often, it's taking such a long time, people get discouraged. Believers get discouraged. We're the natural people, too. We get discouraged. We wonder, what God, what's taking so long? God, what's going on? God said, you? You what's going on? What you doing? What you not doing? What you will do? What you will not do? What you have done? What you have not done? It's about you. It's about you. It's about you, too. I can relate. Well... I, I, I can relate to that. But we ask and we seek and we knock, but God is still quiet. Then old Shlewfoot show up. Yeah. Shlewfoot come and tell you, you yeah. about to lose everything. Yeah. Huh? You tried your best. You've been praying. You've been praying. Where you got it now? You might as well give up. You might as well give up. God ain't listening to you. Shlewfoot come. Yeah. Everybody that come to you. I ain't coming to help you. You got some friends that the Lord been told you. Cut them loose. Release them. Let them go. No. You can't. They're your best. Mm -hmm. They're your best. Mm -hmm. they down for you. They're your day one. they always been there for you. I tell you what. I got news for you to help you with your bestie, your boo, and your best friend. When you go to stand before the judge, your bestie, your boo, and your best friend won't be nowhere around. That's all right. right. And if the Lord done told you to release them and let them go, it's to your detriment to keep them around. I remember Job. There's some silly people around him that he thought was his friends. Mm. Read it for yourself. Everybody that come to you ain't come to help you. All right. Psalms 28 and 1 and 2 says, To you, Lord, I call. You are my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those that go down to the pit. Lord, hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help. As I lift up my hands toward the most holy place. Nobody doing what they're supposed to. How about one and two? How long, oh Lord? How long, oh Lord? How long, oh Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Or cry out to you, violence, Lord, violence, Lord, but you do not say The Lord has a time for everything that goes on in our lives. He's allowing things to mature us and to grow us and to bring us into proper perspective and divine alignment with the plan and the purpose that he has for our lives. Romans 16 and 17 says like this, Now I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And avoid them. He said, the reason you can't get what you need to get is because I told you to avoid them foolish people that you keep hanging out with. Well. I told you to release them. I told you to let them go. But you keep trying to save the world. Not your job to save the world. It's your job to remain saved in the world. Yeah. It's God's job to save people. Your job to tell them the truth so that they can be saved. That's right. You can't save nobody unless you're a lifeguard. <laughs> and they'll drown you. Trying, you trying to save them, they're still drowning. Lifeguards drown too. Listen, he says, avoid them. For they are such that serve not our Lord Jesus. But they serve their own better. Listen, have you ever had somebody that all they good for is taking you out to eat? <laughs> keeping your, keeping, listen, I'm going to say keeping your diabetes active. 
Keeping your diabetes at Keeping your sugar unregulated. Come on. Let's go to Canes and Walkers. Come on. Let's go to Golden Corral. You know it's the all you can eat buffet. And you go over there and you all you can eat. You eat till you can't eat. Them. You get until you have to do one eat. Take that belt loose. That one buck. Then you sit back and you sit there for me. So what you want? I'm letting it go down. And, 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 and go again. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's true. Y'all yeah. yeah. know how we do. Yeah. But the word says, for they that serve such a God, not our Lord Jesus Christ, but they serve their own belly. All they concerned about is eating. They ain't concerned about your soul. They ain't concerned about feeding your spiritual man. But they'll, they'll blow your body up. <laughs> And by good words and fast speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Now, are you simple? How are you going to be simple and informed at the same time? Huh? How are you going to be simple-minded? You mean you so simple-minded and you so gullible that when the pie pipe will say, come on, we're going to go to the corral. Here you go. Go to the corral. Come on. We're going to KW. Here we go. KW. Because, see, you don't go to the other places that hurt your pocketbook real bad. <laughs> but, but you'll go, yeah, whatever, Applebee's, Applebee's. And whatever, whatever, no, whatever. Long, Longhorn. Longhorn. Y'all don't go to them. But y'all will tear the dough down at the Golden Corral and, and at the KW. And you get there, and then you say, I want this. And I want it. See, at the KW, you can only pick. From what they got. Huh? And they they serve. But you go over there and go to the corral where you got control of that spoon. You don't get a plate of macaroni, a plate of chicken, a plate of potatoes, a plate of gravy, a plate of gravy like a Thanksgiving feast. Yeah. All of a one ticket. Yeah. And you'll sit there and you'll eat out and you get that tea and it ain't never got no sugar. To, Bring me about four, five, six, seven packs like of sugar. 15. Trying to eat up fifteen dollars you just spent. No, I'm not gonna try to eat it. Go eat it. <laughs> Don't eat it. And then and then and then and, and then the next thing you ask him, where the bathroom man? Uh, where the bathroom man? Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The word of God says he told y'all stay away from those silly people, those simple minded people who only think about their belly. He said he told you to avoid them. They robbing you. They you can't see they robbing you, because you fool. <laughs> you fool. I'm trying to help somebody. Right. We laughing, but I'm telling you what I tell y'all what y'all do. We're gonna have an assignment. Leave here today and ride by Golden Corral. <laughs> Leave here today and ride by K and W. See what I'm talking about. I tell you, I ain't say go in. I ain't say go in. I ain't gonna ride by there and take a look. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. <laughs> when our promises seem to be taking too long, church, don't give up. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you. Never lose your faith. God is still right here with us, regardless of what it looks like or sounds like, regardless of who comes and who goes. we got to learn how to trust God. It's been a trying week. I'm here to tell you, I know you've been tried. I know you're going through. I go through too. But trust God in whatever comes, still trust God. All right. Sometimes God takes a step back and allows us to wallow in the mess we create. That's right. Sometimes God takes his hand out for us. Okay. You don't need my help? That's right. Okay, you want to do this yourself? Okay, you done created an idol of yourself, of your own making? Okay, you your own God? You've erected an idol in your life that you don't need me? Okay, you have that? Yeah. You go ahead. Don't cry out to me and don't call to me because I'm going to let you handle it because you don't allow me to handle it. You want to handle it. You better ask somebody. Sometimes God will let you handle your own situation that you want him to handle because right. you in the way. Trying to help somebody. Even though God seems silent, even though we don't hear God, guess where he's operating at? In the background. He's anyway. Still, he's still on the inside anyway. That part. He's not going to forsake us. He's not going to leave us or forsake us. Huh? But he will let us go through. That's right. I don't want you to think that you thinking that you in love with somebody's husband or wife, that that's God. Huh? Yeah, it is God, the God of this world. But it ain't 
the real God. It ain't the big G God. It's that little G God telling you that's your, that's your soul mate. <laughs> yeah, y'all, <laughs> okay, soul mate. Y'all spirits might have linked up. Y'all might have a soul tie, an earthly soul tie, because y'all uh, cohabitating and fornicating and entering into things that you ain't got no business. But let me tell you, if they belong to another, they belong to another. God ain't co-signing on no mass. That's yeah. right. He ain't co-signing on no mass. Stop telling that lie that God is co-signing on messes. God has a standard that we have to rise to. We don't lower the word to our standards. We rise to the standard of the word of God. So that the word of God can have free course and free reign to bring us up to that standard. We want to lower God's standard and say God said something he didn't say. And God meant something that God didn't mean. The devil is a lie and you a lie who say it. That's right. I'm trying to help somebody. You mad at God. Because he hasn't given you the desires of your heart yet. But you steady trying to hold on to what he told you to let go of. And you mad at God. You mad at God. He didn't gave you the plan. He didn't told you let him go. He didn't told you release him. He didn't told you go over here. You say, I ain't going over there. He said, I want you over here. You say, I don't want to be over there. He said, I need you here. You say, I don't want to do that. He said, do this. You say, I don't want to. I don't want to. I, I, I. Sounding just like your daddy. I will be like the most high. I will sit on the throne. I, I, I. That's what the devil said. I, 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 I will. I, I, I. Wake up somebody. Wake up. Trying to hold on to what God says release. Only to experience the same disappointments over and over and over. <laughs> Replaying that old record. That record on repeat. Y'all remember when you broke up with your first love and you had a favorite record and you put that thing on and you played the record and you start going, oh, you, 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 it ain't even got no more grooves on that album. You done played it so much, all your hurt and you, you remembering that when they rubbed your foot because you got a peace thing and all of this stuff. They done been married 15 years to somebody else. You still playing records. Ain't released. Still holding on the mess and garbage that God said to release and let go. Wondering why when folk come, you think they're coming on your behalf, but everybody come to you. Ain't come to help you. All right. Now, let's get real right now. Let's get real. God is talking about authenticity. He's looking for people who are authentic. He's what he wants authentic relationships. God is tired of people faking it. Faking it till they make it. Faking it to, how about faith in it until you make it? How about faith in it till you make it? Faking it, yeah, it's easy to fake it, but how about faith in it? Huh? How about put some faith on it? It's easy to put some faith on it. It's easy. All you got to do is go get your two inch eyelashes, five inch fingernails, and some war paint. All we ain't got to do is get some skinny jeans and some sneakers that was made in China. Put them on, and you can fake it with the best of them. How about faith in it until you make it? Mm -hmm. Trying to help somebody. We live in a world which people are so fake, they done forgot how to be real. Come on, man. They done forgot what the real looks like. They done forgot what the real looks like because they operated in the counterfeit for so long. Counterfeit word coming out the pulpit. Counterfeit people hanging around them. Counterfeit believers. Counterfeit leaders. Counterfeit preachers. Counterfeit pastors. Counterfeit teachers, the word calls them false prophet. They're here. Everybody come to you and come to help you. I'm trying to help somebody. The world is alive which people are fake. They just as imitation, it's imitation vanilla. You try to make a cake with imitation vanilla. Taste the cake that's been made with pure vanilla. See what you taste the difference. There's a difference. There's a difference in the faith and the faith. Trying to help somebody. Weak-minded people don't see how the devil adds these substances to our life to keep us off track. Weak-minded people are weak-minded. They hold on to weak-minded stuff. They don't want to grow up. They will always want to be wishy-washy. They always, want, they always are tossed to and fro on every wind of doctrine because they can't stand steadfast. I felt that prayer. 
I felt that prayer. I felt that strength when it came. I was hurting when I got in here this morning. I was frustrated when I got in here this morning. I was at my wit's end when I got in here this morning. But God knew what I needed. All right. He knew who I needed. All right. He knew that sometimes you got to think about somebody else more than you think about yourself. All right. Huh? Yeah. They lift me up in the spirit so that God can do what he's going to do through me. And I felt it. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Come on. Don't think I don't. I know where I came from and what I came through this week. I'm trying to help somebody. Stop by here to remind y'all of something. God is trying to show you your true identity. He's also trying to show you the true identity of people that's around you. All right. Open your eyes up. Wake up. Look here, folks. Snakes shed their skin. Well. But they still snakes. Even when they shed their skin. Still a snake. People in the church hissing. Well. Hissing. Hissing at you. Snakes in the church. What are you talking about? I'm talking about there's snakes in the church. There's wolves in the church. There's roaring lions in the church. There's buzzards in the church. There's bats in the church. Come on. There's vampires in the church. There's all of this stuff that's antichrist. Huh? Gotta be in the church. Well. To be the church. Snake sheds his skin. It's still a snake. Some folk change the outfit. They still snakes. Come on Some folk change their conversation. They still snakes. A wolf in sheep's clothing is a wolf that's pretending to look like a sheep. That's right. Well, he don't want to be discovered. So he get in there, he talk like the sheep talk. He dress like the sheep dress. Huh? He eat what the sheep eat at. He get them good and fat. He get the cash. He get the fatty cash. He fatten them up real good before he comes looking for something to devour. Well, before he comes to look for something to eat. Well, but he fatten them up first. Wolves' desire is to be ferocious and ravenous and to destroy and to disrupt. That's what wolves do. Hey, but wolves pretend. They mimic. They intermingle. Wolves are like tar amongst the wheat. The word of God says a wolf is in sheep's clothes. Well. When you're going through, you got to understand when you say ignorant stuff. You know people say ignorant stuff. Christians say ignorant stuff. Mm -hmm. Believe me. I love him to death. 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 Idiot. Ignorant. Mm -hmm. Foolish. Mm -hmm. Unlearned. You just invited death to somebody you claim you love. Mm -hmm. Why can't you love them to life? Well. Why can't you love them to life and life more abundantly? Why can't you love them to life? Why you got to love them to death? Loving somebody to death <laughs> includes suffocation. It includes choking. Because if you love them to death, death is a part of your love. <laughs> trying to help somebody. Why can't you love them to life? You can't say foolish stuff and think it don't have an impact. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Everybody come to you and come to help you. All right. Jesus said in Matthew, right around the 43rd verse, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and find none. Then he said, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he finds the house in, swept and gone. Then he goeth, and he taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Everybody that comes to you ain't come to help you. You done got yourself together. You done let the crack go. You done got yourself together. You done let the living go. 
You done got yourself together. You ain't running the streets no more. You done got yourself together. And you're doing it right. Here Sloop would come. Sloop would come and say, hey, run with me over here. Hey, drop me off over here. Hey, take me over here. Hey, let me borrow a little something. Hey, run. Always wanting you to do something that's going to take you back to a place that you just came from. And you don't realize it because you're too weak-minded, too jelly back to release them and let them go. No is easy as yes. No, listen, I ain't going to do that. Uh, but listen, I, I, I don't have time to do that. I really don't have time. I don't really have no other justification. I just don't want to go in that environment. You know, I, listen, I'm sorry, but I can't do it. We, 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 we act like we, like we got to say yeah every time somebody makes a request of us. Or we not being a good Christian. The devil is a lie. You got to guard your spirit. You got to watch your back. You got to know them that labor amongst you. You got to know them that ain't laboring amongst you. You got to know who's around you. How you going to know them? The word of God say by their fruit. If they smoking crack and they need for you to take them over here, you got to know it's a crack house. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. We got brothers and sisters crying, dying, hurting, contemplating suicide. About to lose their house. About to lose their home. Got a bad report from the doctor. Scared. Angry. And confused. You want to do get something to eat. You only thinking about your bed. You don't want to sit down and take a minute to talk to them. Be kind to them. Show them a little bit of that shockness that's in you. Show them a little bit of that grace. You ain't got time. They about ready to leave this earth. And they they coming to you. You ain't got time for them. I'm trying to help somebody. They scared for what tomorrow brings. They scared to go home because they're going to get beat. They scared they in something, and you got them right there. And you talking about basketball, baseball, football, soccer, and hockey. Your discernment ain't even operating so that you know what's going on in their spirit. Instead of praying for them, you're on the hell of I'm talking about. Instead of tarrying with them, you leave them alone in their misery. Instead of having their back, you leave them alone to fend off fiery darts. From things that they don't even know is coming. You won't even intercede and pray on their behalf. Christian. Everybody that come to you. Ain't come to help you. Be careful who you listen to. Just because somebody got on a nice suit. Standing behind the podium. Speak a few good words. Don't mean God put them there. All right. There are angels of light masquerading. All over the land and country. Well. Men and women alike. We've already talked about the false prophets. They would fool the very elect if it were possible. Well. Some people, are, it is possible to fool them. Only for a season. Remember what John said. 1 John 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. And I'm closing, being obedient to the Spirit of the Lord. These seven things I need for you to look for when people don't come to help you. I need for you to know who, what a wolf looks like. I need you to understand the characteristics of a wolf. I need you to understand that God is saying, I need for you to let some of these people go. I need for you to let some of these people go. Let some of that garbage and stuff that you're holding on to go. But right now we're talking about wolves. We're talking about people that come to you not coming to help you. Wolves always have an issue with spiritual authority. Jesus operated under divine authority. Jesus said he didn't do anything unless he saw his father do it. Well, that's why a whole lot of children in bad conditions because they're doing the same thing that they saw their father do. Wow. Hmm? Because that's the only father that they knew. They don't have an intimate relationship with the father. They didn't have an intimate relationship with their father, but they still saw him. And they saw what he did. Jesus said, I only did what I saw my daddy do. Wolves have an issue with spiritual authority. Two, wolves try to manipulate and control. They try to operate by using intimidation. 
they don't realize that they have been exposed. Listen, you know a wolf when you see a wolf, don't you? You should. And if you don't, these are some telltale signs of how to determine whether it's a wolf. When wolves are in a fight, they go for blood. Wolves will turn on you instantaneously. They get ferocious. They get ravenous. Wolves like conflict. They like conflict. They go one step further. When a wolf tastes blood, he goes into a frenzy. He goes into a feeding frenzy. And what happens? He attracts other wolves. Trying to help somebody. Number four. Wolves act one way around people and another way around other people. Huh? A wolf will come in agreement with you. Yeah. 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 And as soon as you leave, what was that fool talking about? <laughs> Did you hear that fool? <laughs> now that fool, that's a wolf. That's a wolf. Number five. Wolves don't start out being wolves. Everything starts out being an infant. A dog starts out being a, a puppy. A wolf starts out being a cub. Huh? Right. Wolves didn't just turn into wolves. They grew into wolves from a cub. Puppies don't remain puppies. They grow into dogs. Babies don't remain babies. They grow into adults. Children, toddlers, teens, adults, and old folks. They started one way and finished another. Wolves just didn't happen overnight. Wolves matriculated and grew into what they became because of hurts, because of deception, because of bad teaching, bad theology. They didn't start as a wolf. Wolves live for the love of power. Wolves got to be in control. Wolves refuse to be held accountable to submission or obedience to anything that leadership says. A wolf has got something contrary. Well, what about this? Well, what about that? Well, how about if we look at it this way? You give one scripture, they got another scripture. They want to counteract your scripture with their scripture. Wolves. Learn their traits and characteristics. Seven, and the most important one for us to remember. When I say that everybody that comes to you don't come to help you, get this in your spirit and get it real well. Wolves look like the sheep. They talk like the sheep. But they bite like wolves. Huh? Especially when the sheep are disagreeing. Especially when the sheep are arguing amongst themselves. Well. Especially when the sheep are scattered and unattended. Wolves love to separate the sheep from the pack and get them off to the side right. where they can convince them of things. Wolves love it when there's dissension and infighting. Wolves thrive in that environment. Wolves operate inside of congregations. Well. They're underhanded. They're cunning. They're slick. They're sly. They're tell a lie. Co-signing on somebody else. A, a, a wolf will pick up the telephone and call you and tell you something that somebody said that they said. Yeah. Because they slot. Yeah. They cunning. Yeah. They have an end game. Mm -hmm. Wolves. Yeah. Wolves are slick. Everything a wolf does, they do to appear to be less cunning, less threatening. They don't want to be recognized. That's why they try to blend in. Oh, but sometimes you got somebody and you can't put your finger on it, something just. Don't feel right. Mm -hmm. That's discernment. Mm -hmm. That's discernment. As I close, I'll leave you with this last thought. The Bible warns us that reckless words pierce like a sword. Proverbs 12, 18. Verbal abuse is real. And when regularly done, it becomes lethal to the person on the receiving end. We talk about this thing that people talk about church hurts. Church hurts. Church hurts. Church hurts. Church hurts. Church hurts. Take the church out of it and just talk about hurts. 
What about home hurts? What about work hurts? What about relationship hurts? What about hurt hurts? What about football hurts? Hurts! It's just hurts. Ain't no such animal as church hurts. Church hurts is what people say when they've been misused and mishandled by people in the congregation. But you, the church, hurt is still hurt. Regardless of where you are, regardless of where it came from, hurt is still hurt. Proverbs said, reckless words pierce like a soul. Don't let your words be reckless. Lift people up. Don't tear people down. Understand and know who's around you. When you pray and you're looking for God to confirm something on your behalf, make sure that it's God bringing you the answer and not somebody else because everybody that come to you ain't coming to help you. Let's not be naive. Let's no longer close our eyes and think that there are no wolves among us. Wolves are everywhere. Amen. Wolves are everywhere. Birds are everywhere. Roaches are everywhere except in my house. <laughs> I thought that might go over. I do this. But they're everywhere except in my house. I don't deal with them. Rats and mice are everywhere except in my house. Because that one they got in the garage, I got him out real quick. <laughs> Trying to help somebody. Don't be deceived, church. Know them that labor amongst you, is what the Lord said. Know their fruit. Know what they are about. Because as I stated when I got here today, everybody that comes to you ain't coming to help. That's right. Amen. Amen. I've given you what the Spirit of the Lord has mentioned when you give to you on this. Let's seal this word with a prayer. Father God, we thank you on today. We thank you, Father God, for those who found their way here. We thank you, Father God, and we ask you to bless them in our in a mighty way. Bless them with a special anointing. Father God, we thank you, Father God, that from the north, the south, and the east, the west, they're coming. Father God, we send forth the word of God. You said the word can heal them all. So we send the word of healing. We send the word of hope. We send the word of encouragement. Father God, lift us up so that we can be better lights and better beacons for that that is shining left in the earth. Allow us to be that remnant, Father God, that light that is on the hill. Thank you, Father God, for all of those that are here. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the undergirding. Thank you for the strength that coming from the prayers. Father God, thank you for everything. You said to give thanks in all things. Father God, so I thank you for it. In spite of what it looks like, in spite of what it feels like, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe you. Lord, I love you. Lord, do these things on our behalf. Receive these prayers and supplications, Father God. Lift us up. Father God, we'll be joyful, thankful to give your name. Glory on and praise because the praise belongs to you and the joy belongs to you. It's yours already. All those under the sound of my voice that are in agreement with this prayer say thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Amen.